G'day, Chris here and welcome back to ClickSpring. In this video, I make the oscillator at the heart of the clock, the pendulum. If there's one common attribute across all mechanical timepieces, it's that each must have a component that provides a fixed and consistent interval of time. For a watch, that'll most likely be a small weight acting against a balance spring. And for a clock like this, it's a pendulum acting against gravity. The pendulum on this clock is a nice clean design. A brass bob at the end of a length of thin rod. The plans call for a simple brass disc for the bob. But I think it'll be a bit more interesting with a contoured profile like this. There's a hook fitting on the other end to catch the suspension thread. And a small block that fits axially on the pendulum rod to receive the impulse from the clock escapement. For materials, I have this slice of 2 inch diameter brass for the bob, some rod stock for the hook and pendulum rod, and I'll use a small piece of this offcut left over from crossing out the large wheel to make the pendulum block. So let's get started. Now, although the profile of the bob is quite simple, its shape makes it quite a challenging part to hold onto while making the required cuts. The other challenge is to make sure that the various surfaces are kept true to each other as the part is released and then rechucked to make subsequent cuts. One solution is to drill a hole in the disc and then use a threaded mandrel to hold it. But of course that leaves the issue of what to do with the hole when all of the cuts have been made. It could be plugged easily enough I guess, but I think it's preferable to avoid that if possible. So I'm going for what I think is a much neater solution, and that is to turn a reference spigot on the centre of each face. The surface and the spigot together define the axis of the part. Providing I hold it while registering these two features, I can be sure that the part is located on the central axis of the lathe. A matching super glue arbor can be turned up and a central hole drilled to accept the spigot just formed. Once the glue is set, the outer perimeter can be trued up, and the second face and spigot put in place. The top slide was set to 15 degrees to make the taper cut for the contour. Although you'll have to take my word on that, because the markings on this lathe are well and truly on the way out. The taper cut removes the bulk of the material, and so reduces the workload for the form tool that follows. Now that surface finish needs to be improved, so I wrapped abrasive paper around this file to maintain the contour, while I sanded and then polished the surface. As usual, heat from a small torch breaks the superglue bond and then the arbor can be cleaned up and refaced to hold the bob the other way around. The second spigot and face locate the part on the axis of the lathe and I can profile the other surfaces exactly as I did the first 
knowing that all features will be true. Acetone cleans off the superglue residue and then it's over to the mill to put in the hole for the pendulum rod. So that sorts out all of the main features of the pendulum bob. I just need to remove that last spigot to complete the part. Now I'd like to protect the perimeter of the bob while I make those cuts. So I'm using some thin strips of aluminium sheet to cover the chuck jaws. Starting with the work loosely held in the chuck jaws, you can see that initially it's not running true. But an excellent way to correct that is with this bump centering tool. The tool is gently brought into contact with the work until the bearing starts to continuously rotate. At this point the lathe is stopped and the jaws further tightened. Visually I can see that the part is running quite true, but an indicator shows just how effective this simple tool can be. Next I gently faced that spigot clean off and then took a light pass to leave a nice satin finish fresh from the tool. I'm going to leave that as the final finish for that surface as a contrast with the polished perimeter. Now I'd like to get a coat of lacquer on the bob as soon as possible to preserve those surfaces and I'll need a way to hold it as soon as I do that. So I prepared the pendulum rod next. I've already cut the stock to length so all it really needs is a quick tidy up of the ends. I'm holding it with this shop made hand vise, which is perfect for this sort of task because it can accommodate long stock through the body of the tool. And it allows me to easily put on a light chamfer with the belt sander. Some Loctite 603 bonds the pendulum rod in place and a rinse in solvent removes the excess adhesive. With the bob and rod complete, I can move on to the pendulum hook, which again is a difficult little part to hold, especially once a few of the features have been formed. The basic profile is straightforward enough, consisting of a cylinder and a short tapered section, as well as a central hole to accommodate the pendulum rod. The part was then reversed and pressed onto this stub arbor while I used a graver to shape the other end. A light sand and polish brings up the surface finish and it's ready to have the features for the hook formed. First up I'm drilling a cross hole to define the top of the hook slot.
The cross hole diameter is one millimeter and I've used the drill bit to help me align the workpiece in the vise. And I'd like the slot to also have a keyhole cross section to hold the suspension thread towards the top of the slot should the pendulum be lifted slightly during handling. So I'm using a cutting blade that's just a bit thinner at 0.8 of a millimeter. A quick tidy up of the burrs from the saw blade and the hook is complete. The final part of the assembly is the pendulum block, which is nice and straightforward to make. It simply needs to be brought to size and then drilled axially to accept the pendulum rod. A few drops of Loctite bond these last two parts in place and I'm taking care to align the hook and block perpendicular to the face of the pendulum bob. And that's the pendulum assembly complete. So let's have a look at it in action. Now there are two crucial properties that make a pendulum useful as a timekeeping oscillator. Firstly, for small swings, the time it takes to swing to one side and then back again remains approximately the same even if the size of that swing slightly changes. This is known as isochronism. And secondly, that time interval is approximately proportional to the square root of the pendulum length divided by gravity. This gives us two things. We can tolerate some small variations in how wide our pendulum swings and still have an accurate clock. And most importantly, we can also set that time interval by simply making the pendulum a certain fixed length. Now you'll have noticed that I said approximately a few times there. Everything I've mentioned is correct up to a point and was true enough to spark off several centuries of scientific discovery. But there's a lot more to it than what I've mentioned, so check the description box below for some links if you'd like to know more. The takeout message is that pendulums need to be a specific length to keep a clock in time. And whilst the pendulum for this clock has been fabricated to a specific length, I can still make some small adjustments by using the suspension regulator. I've set up a timing machine to measure the time interval of a complete swing and at the moment it's a little less than one second. But as I lengthen the pendulum suspension thread, I increase the effective length of the pendulum. And so that time interval also increases, in this case to just over one second per swing. The pendulum needs to receive a regular push to replace the small amount of energy that it loses to friction. And it receives that push from another crucial part of the clock mechanism that I'll complete in a future video. The escapement. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later. And if you've just made your way into this clock making series, thanks for checking it out. This is just one episode of a longer series where I show all of the steps to make a mechanical clock from raw metal stock, so be sure to check out those other videos. If you'd like to help me bring you more project videos like this one, then consider becoming a Clickspring patron. As a patron of the channel, you get access to exclusive patron only video content, free plans for the patron projects, and the chance to win the actual project at the end of each build. Like for example this useful little hand vise. Find out more by visiting patreon.com forward slash clickspring. And finally, if you're looking for some new projects for your lathe or mill, then take a moment to visit clickspringprojects.com where you'll find a range of plans available for download, including plans for some of the tools I've made to help me construct this clock. 
Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next video.